One of the most famous and earliest algorithms in mathematics is the Euclidean algorithm, which calculates the greatest common divisor of two non-zero integers. So I give it two non-zero integer inputs, and it will return the largest integer, which divides into both of them. So in pseudocode, I have to input the two integers m and n, and I'll set an index of i is 1 initially. So what I want to do, if m is the smaller of the two, I rewrite n as q i lots of m, so how many times I can divide m into n, and it will leave a remainder ri. And ri, the remainder, has to be non-negative, but it also has to be strictly less than m. We've seen this before when we introduced division and remainders in the previous video. And by the well-ordering principle, we could show as well that this was unique. There was a unique qi and ri that came out for any given m and n. And I keep repeating this, replacing the old m as the new n, and the old remainder ri as the new m, and then I'll update i to i plus 1. And I do this repeatedly, repeatedly, until eventually there is no remainder left, until eventually r j is zero for some j, I don't know what it is, and when I've got that I can output that the greatest common divisor of m and n is r j minus one. The last non-zero remainder that I had has to be the greatest common divisor. Now as the name suggests, that's attributed to our favourite long dead slightly disappointed looking Greek mathematician, Euclid. At this stage, it may not be instantly obvious that the Euclidean algorithm is correct. It's not obvious, maybe, that this does indeed return the greatest common divisor of the integers m and n. When it says the answer is rj, how do I know that that's correct? Well, one way I can do this is by showing that the greatest common divisor is loop invariant. So in other words, whilst I change my m and my n in each loop, they should always have the same greatest common divisor. So that's what I want to show. I want to show that this procedure of shuffling around what the m and the n are does not change the underlying truth of what the greatest common divisor of my current m and my current n is. So I want to show that if I start a loop with n and m, whatever their greatest common divisor is, is the same as the greatest common divisor at the end of the loop. And if we look back at the previous slide, the old m became my new n, one iteration forward, and my old n minus qi lots of m became my new m. So I want to show that updating those two integers in that way does not change the greatest common divisor. To prove that this works, we set the greatest common divisor of n and m being some integer k. So I know that n can be written as a multiples of k and m can be written as b multiples of k for some a and b. So that's saying that k is a divisor of both m and n. But if it's the greatest common divisor, I know that these a and b 
neither can divide each other, because if one could divide into the other, then I would have a divisor, but it wouldn't be the greatest divisor. So now I can show that k still divides what I updated m to, which was n minus qi lots of m. k is still a divisor of this updated um, integer. And similarly, I can say that if the greatest common divisor of m and n minus qi lots of uh, m is j, then m is j lots of c, and n minus qi m is j lots of d for integers c and d, which again, if the greatest common divisor c can't divide d, and d can't divide c. Then what I'm left with is I've shown that j has to divide n because j has to divide qi lots of m um, and n minus qi lots of m, by definition. So I've shown that all integers that divide n and m also divide m and n minus qi lots of m and the same the other way around. So if they've got the exact same um, the same numbers divide them, then they've got the great, same greatest common divisor as well. We can now see an example of how the Euclidean algorithm works. So we'll take the problem of finding the greatest common divisor of 527 and 341. So when i is 1, my first stage, I say that n can be written as one lot of m, one lot of 341, and that leaves a remainder of 186. So in the updating stage, I update my new n to my old m, so n becomes 341, and my new m becomes the remainder, which was 186 at the last step. So updating i now to be 2, I work out the greatest common divisor of 341 and 186. Well, 341 is one lot of 186 with a remainder of 155. So now n becomes 186 and m becomes 155. When I work that out, 186 is one lot of 155 with a remainder of 31. Now, when I work out the greatest common divisor of 155 and 31, I get 155 is five lots of 31 with no remainder at all. So I stop because I've hit a remainder of zero. And when I hit a remainder of zero, I know that my previous remainder, which in this case was 31, is the greatest common divisor of the two numbers. So sure enough, 31 is the greatest common divisor at every stage of this. If you want to check every pair of n and m has greatest common divisor 31. So Euclid was right.